Hello, and welcome to Mitchell Consulting's webinar series uh, for Mitchell University. Today we're going to be working with SAP Business One, and we're going to talk about serial and batch processing within the SAP Business One software. For purposes of the demo today, we're using uh, SAP version 8.82 for our demo. So let's talk a little bit about um, the concept of serial and batch within the system. If we go here to our administration, we would see in our system initialization and under general settings, we have the options for inventory to set our system up. So here we can determine how we're going to manage our serials and batches. A little bit about the concept between the two, and we'll discuss both of these concepts today. <laughs> The serial number is a unique number per item. This is typically, you'll see this when you're buying a product, uh, you're buying a computer, or a tablet, you know, a refrigerator, or a washer dryer, they all have unique serial numbers. It's a one-to-one -one relationship that that serial number is set for that particular item. It's used to track the item for warranty purposes and so on. The concept of a batch is a group. The batch is you're going to assign a group of items the same batch number. This is used a lot in the um, pharmaceutical industry, often referred, and also in the food industry. It's often referred to as lots. <laughs> what happens is, is I produce, um, let's say I produce uh, aspirins today, and I produce a thousand bottles. They all came from the same lot. I produce food. Uh, I make, you know, again produced from the same lot. You'll hear this a lot, like when you hear recalls, they'll say, you know, they're recalling um, whatever lettuce from lot one, two, three. So the lot is for a group of items that share a commonality. Either they're all manufactured at the same time or something, where a serial number is unique. You can also see here when you're dealing with the serial numbers, you have the option to automatically create what's known as the customer equipment card. There is a service and repair module in SAP um, and what that allows you to do here is you can actually have equipment cards. The concept of that would be, again, if you're doing something with serials and you want to track warranties, you have the ability of setting that up. So here you determine how you want to manage um, your serials and batches. We're going to do it on every transaction or release only. The difference being on every transaction, as I receive the merchandise, it's going to prompt me for the serial numbers, and then those serial numbers will be sold at the time of, of the release, or you can do a release only. A lot of clients like to do release only because they don't, either the items already come serialized or they want to determine the serialization later on before they ship. But again, it's part of the setup. We're going to do on every transaction. You can see unique serial numbers by, and again, here you would have that lot, okay? or serial, we're going to go with serial, and then you have the same settings for batch. Okay, so we're just going to set everything to release. This is set up general for the system. Once this is turned on, then we can go into our individual items and we can set up uh, serial and batch. So let's look at an item that we'll be working with today. So I'm going to go to my item master data. And we have an item that begins with S, which is our serialized item. So here are the server points, and you can see here on the inventory tab, uh, you can see not the inventory tab here, on the general tab, you can see the serial lot. So you can see that this item is being managed by serial numbers, and we're using our default method on every. If we just choose another item, so let's just kind of go back and pick this item, you can see this item is PC set to is not serialized. That means when I buy and sell this item, so I'm not going to be prompted to enter any types of serial numbers. So here we have this one here that we have set up for serial. We also have a batch set up here, this item, and this item we're managing by batches. So we'll look at these two concepts within the system and see how they work and how they're tracked. At any given time, we can, in the item, we can do a right click of this item and we can go to our batch number transaction report. Here we're going to look at all the ins and outs for this particular item. So we can see here, if 
we highlight, for example, this line, we can see the ins and outs. We can see that we have this one came in and out. And again, we can choose any of these items to see what's going on. So you can see how it came in on this purchase order and it went out on this delivery ticket. Same holds true for the uh, serial. So if we select it, we can do a right click. We can go to our serial number transaction report and we have the same thing. You'll notice here that you tend to have a lot more because again, the serial, serial is a one-to-one -one relationship. So you can see here, again, the items coming in. Let's take a look at those and let's actually do a good receipt and see how they work. So we're going to go into purchases and accounts payable and we'll just go directly to a goods receipt. We'll choose our vendor. Okay, and let's for this one, let's start with the serial. So let's just put S and let's choose our serial. And we're going to go here and we're going to say we want 10. So we're going to go ahead now and add this. And when we add it, since we're doing a goods receipt, which means we're bringing the merchandise in, we're updating our quantity on hand, <laughs> it's going to prompt us now for the serial. And again, it's doing it this way because I have SAP set to manage on all transactions. So if I had it on release only, it wouldn't prompt me here, but it will actually prompt me to create or assign a serial number on the way out. So you can go ahead and do it yourself here. You can actually do them. Again, you can create a manufacturer serial number. Maybe they come from the manufacturer. You just want to key those in. You can create your serial number. There are expiration dates, which is going to be the date of the system. Right now, I'm setting up to be um, February 2nd, 2012 is the date of my demo. And again, you can put warranty information in. So here, you can put in um, maybe a be you know again a beginning and ending. How long? the warranty last on this particular item that we're receiving. And here I'm just going to click the automatic creation. When I do this, it's going to just make it easy for me to create. So I'm just going to go here. Um, again, I can just click on my serial numbers. So I can set up a certain operation. I can say, um, I can set a string. So let's say I want all these to begin with like SA. And then I want to create a number. I'm going to start with 1,000, and I'm going to set that here to be a number, and I'm going to set it to increase. So what's going to happen is it's going to create 10 serial numbers, and they're going to begin with SA. So I'm going to have SA, 1,000, 1,001, and so on. So I'm going to click Create, and again, you can see what I've done. I've created those 10 serial numbers. And again, I can go in here and put expiration dates on them if I chose to. I can put manufacturer dates. The admission date is just the dates being created. And I could have gone a little bit further and add that information. But this is the basics, what we need. So we're going to click Update. I'm going to click OK. And we're going to go ahead and add the document. OK, so what we did is we created those. Let's go back. So here is our document. You can see that we received 10. Again, if we right click, we can go to the serial number transaction report. And we can see for this document only, since we're in the document, we're just going to see the serial transaction report for this document. Remember before, if we went into the item itself, here, and we did that right click, again, we're seeing all the transactions. So if we go down to our last transaction here, these are the ones we just created. So the difference being is here we're looking at all transactions. <laughs> Again, as we know from working with SAP Business One, we can filter if we want to filter on this information. But here's all the transactions related to the item. Since I'm already in the document itself, the functionality just selects the one document. So I can go here. And again, I can look, and you can see what I've done. Again, I have no manufacturing number. But here, I can now drill into the unique serial number. And again, it was created automatically. <laughs>
Again, all the information is here. Um, I could add um, lot numbers or I can add ex dates and so on to here if I wanted to, if I want to put warranty dates or dates in and out. So you can see here, very simple, that uh, they've come in and you can see that this document, this PD, which is the goods receipt PO here, we have 10 in. We haven't sold anything from this yet, so we just have 10 in. Remember, we have, we have actually 13 on this item. So if we go and let's just do a delivery real quick. I'm just going to sell this. And again, I'm doing a delivery ticket, so um, merchandise is going out. So I'm going to here put, let's say, five. So I'm going to sell five. And the same concept. Since I have my SAP set up to do it on all transactions, it's now going to, of course, when I do my delivery, since merchandise is leaving, I need a serial number. If we had set SAP to do it on release only, then at this point you'd be prompted to either create or select existing serial numbers. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and add this document. And again here you can see all the documents. So you can see here I have a total available 13. So I have these original ones, these A, B, C, 3, 4, and 5, and then I have the 10 that I created. I can individually select, so I can, if I want to highlight this one, I can move it over. So you can see what I have left. <clears throat> so you can see here I've selected one, I have four. So I can do it this way. Or what I can do is just highlight this and put it back. I can do an auto select. So what auto select is going to do is just going to grab the oldest ones first, the way they came in. So it's going to bring in A, B, C, three, four, and five, and grab these two. Again, if, I, if I'm not happy with the auto select, and let's say I don't want this number five, I can just move it over, and I can go down here and select, let's say, this highlight line eight, which is number one zero zero eight, and I can move that over. But again, here you can see now I've, I've fulfilled because I'm shipping five and I selected five unique serial numbers. And again, you can see now I have eight left. I'm going to click Update, click OK, and I'm going to add Document. So now we've shipped those. If now if we call the document up, you can see here's the five. And again, we have the availability of just right-clicking. We want to look at the serial transaction report for this delivery only. So you can see here what we sold. So we can see that five went out. You can see the document number. This is delivery 278, which you can see here. You can see it's row one on the delivery ticket. Again, our date, we're using February 2nd, 2012 as our demo date. And again, you can see the warehouse, the business partner, which came out and out. And we can see the outs. So the nice thing about this now, if we want to look at one of these unique items, we can see both the ins and outs of these items. Because remember, you can see that we have this delivery 278, and we have this goods receipt. Two eighty eight. So now if we go directly to that item, let's call up that item real quick. And we do a right click and we look at the serial number transaction report. As we scroll down here, you can see here that item eight. <laughs> again, since we chose that item eight, you can see again the ins and outs. You can see that it came in on the goods receipt 288 and it went out on the delivery 278. So we did that one. If we select number five, we can see it's in, but we haven't sold that one yet. I believe we did this one here, just to, was it this one, one of them, this one here, 278, and so on. We can do some filtering. 
we want to filter on the information. Again, we can go here and look at a particular document. We can say for the document equals to uh, this one right here. Okay, we're just looking at that document and so on. So again, very simple to work with in SAP. Very good because again, it does all the information for you and makes it easy to track. So now let's look at the batch. The batches work the same principle, and then we'll do a batch one, and then we'll look at some of the management tools to actually maintain and make any changes to uh, serials and batches that have come in. So let's go into um, purchasing an AP. Let's do our goods receipt PO. And we're going to select our vendor, so we're just going to stay with Far East. And you can see this is going to be goods receipt 289. Just call up here and let's say let's do 10 of these again. And we'll do 20 of these. And same principle, I'm going to go ahead and add this goods receipt PO. So I'm going to receive merchandise, update my inventory. Because I'm doing that, it's now going to prompt me. <laughs> and you can see something different here. You don't have the unique lines. We can still do the auto creation. Okay, so if we do an auto creation, we can still do that. So we can call this. Um, let's call this B A, and here we can put a number. And again, it's no relative. Even though I increase it, we're going to do a thousand on here. You can see what it did. Instead of again creating twenty unique numbers, it didn't start with. With with B A one zero zero you know one thousand and go one thousand one and one thousand two and so on. The reason why it didn't do that because number batches are a group. So what it says is that this batch we just received this printer label they all have the same batch number. So it's going to be the batch attribute B A one thousand. I could have put it here too if I want to just do a copy because I did the auto create. I could have just typed it in here and so on. So we're going to click Update, and we're going to add this document. Okay, so let's go back and look at that document. And again, if we right-click, we can see now, instead of saying the serial report, it says the batch number transaction report. Again, I say if you just know that this is a batch number. So again, you can see the ins. You only see one of them. You don't see the 20, because this is unique for that item. Same principle holds true, so let's just go and complete this, and let's do a delivery. And let's deliver uh, five of these. Again, we're going to add. Since we're doing a delivery, we're going to be taking the merchandise out of stock. So of course, now it's going to prompt us. And you can see here, the different batches. Okay, here's the one we just added here. So again, if we highlight this batch and we move it over, we can click OK. We can go ahead and add the document. I didn't select one. Um, here, we need to select five because we're taking five from the batch. And then we're going to move it over because we can select from two different batches. So here we have our five. So again, total selected is five. We're going to update. Click OK. You notice, by the way, when I didn't select it, it didn't let me add the document. Because if I don't select the proper amount, if I selected four, it's going to prompt me to make sure I do my batch correctly. Let's go back to the last transaction. And again, we can see our five. If we right click and we look at the batch report, we can see here the five that went out. So if we look at this report, we can see here the original was 20. Okay, We have 15 left, and here we have five that went out, again, on that document. This is unique to the uh, delivery. So if we go back into the item, and we 
call it up. And we go and we right click and we do our batch. Again, we can see here if we go down to our last one here. Again, we can see the ins and outs. For this one here, again, <clears throat> as we saw, the goods receipt 289. We bought in 20. And then we have this delivery, more five went out. So again, very easy to work with, very easy to track. And you'll see the difference. You know, again, serial numbers are unique. You need one unique serial number for every item, <clears throat> and batches are a, a group or a lot. So let's go here into inventory now, and let's look at the inventory management sign of the items, serials, and batches. I'm just going to grab these, and I'm going to drop them in my common areas. So we can just do that here. So you can see we can do a couple things. We can we can manage serial numbers. Let's just bring those into my common area. Okay, this is a functionality of, of, of the newer version of SAP called the cockpit. So what I'm doing is I have to keep opening up the menu. I'm just putting the things I use, my common functions, or my, my custom little menu right here. So here we can go to serial numbers management. Again, we can uh, we have a couple things. We can update existing serial numbers if we want to make changes. We can complete or close anything that got received. We just want to get it off the reports. We don't have a big history trail. Again, we can select a specific item number. So let's do our item. We can do it by groups and by properties. So here we're looking at all the AP involved. So here we can do goods receipt, goods return, AP invoices, and AP credits. The reason why we have all these is because in SAP, uh, when I do my goods receipt or my, my goods return, I'm affecting the quantity. But some people just go right to the AP invoice. So they may have a purchase order, and then when they, when they get the AP invoice, they receive everything at one shot. So they go from a PO directly to an AP invoice. Or they just started an AP invoice. Again, if I don't do the goods receipt, the AP invoice will take care of the inventory. And the same holds true if I don't do a goods return and do a credit, it'll take care of it that way. Same holds true with the sales side of it. Again, deliveries and returns. But again, I can go right here. And I have the same concepts with inventory. Remember, I have goods issues and goods receipts coming from inventory, which we'll show you in a moment. It works the same as the purchasing and the sales. So let's just go here and let's just click OK. And again, I can also put a date range if I want. Let's just put today's date. OK, and what I'm looking at here is an update. I can make any changes because let's say I want to add a field, I want to put an expiration date, I can do whatever I want and ex execute global changes on these items. Or I can actually close them out. Same holds true with the details. I can look at the serial number details here. So if I'm, I'm looking for a certain item, I know that the serial number started with SA. So again, we can find. And here I'm just looking at the item I originally created. This is the serial number detail, one by one. You saw that during the auto creation. Again, I may want to make a change to it. <laughs> I want to update, a, let's say, a warranty date or so on. I just have the ability of doing that. Again, the same holds true with batch. We can look at batch management. We can update it. We can complete a batch. So let's just do a date range. And let's do deliveries, and let's do goods receipt PO. And again, we just can see here we can make, we can update this batch. Again, we can do global changes to it if we want. Even just a way of accessing the item, the serials and batches you've already created. And the same holds true with your batch detail. Um, let's just do a search for this one here. And again, you can see what we created. And again, we can just do it. We can lock it. We can make it not accessible anymore. OK, one to one on the, the matches. And like you saw, this holds true for anything affecting inventory. If I want to do, let's say, a quantity adjustment, let's do an inventory transactions. 
let's say oh, I want to do a transfer of an item. So again, we're going to do a transfer here. We're going to go from warehouse two, select our item, to warehouse two. And we're going to do one. Again, when I add it, it's just going to ask me the allocation process. I can just auto select. Yeah, it's just going to grab the last one, update, and I can add this. I go back and look at the transaction I've just done. And again, you can see the same holds true. If I go here and look at the serial reports, I can see the ins and outs. The in and out is going to be on the same um, inventory transfer. This is inventory transfer number eight. But you can see the warehouse codes have changed. And it holds true on the adjustments. Again, if I do, let's say something got damaged, I'm going to do a goods issue. And I'm going to go ahead and um, let's pick the batch. OK, so we're going to reduce, again, one out of stock. We're going to go ahead and add this. And the same principle. So select it out of this batch here. Highlight it and move it over. So that one was damaged. We're just doing a, a good issue to take it out of stock. So it's no longer available to sell. So again, if I go back and take a look, you see the same thing. If I right click and look at my batch number transaction report, you can see it went out. <laughs> and you can see it went out on the goods issue number four, and you can see here. So that concludes our little webinar today, um, working with the serial and batches. To recap what we've learned today, we know that in SAP Business One, we can set our system to do serials and or batches. We know that we would go to administration, systemization, and in the general settings here, we would go to our inventory items. And we would do here how we want to manage. Again, we're doing every transaction or release only, difference being on every transaction. When merchandise comes in, I got to assign a serial number. And of course, going out, I have to let's take a serial number. You can do release only. The difference is that when you receive the goods receipt, like we did, or anything gets received, it's not going to prompt you for the uh, to create the um, serial number or batch. You would have to use under the um, these, that's what this update is for here. You would have to actually eventually do it because on the way out, when I do go to release it, when I do a delivery or an AR invoice, I'm going to need a batch number. So some people just bring them in as nothing, and then, then they use this, the batch number management. You saw that update. to so just go ahead and create, auto-create them at that time. Here, you can do unique serial numbers by. And again, we're just, you can use the manufacturer number. Let's say you're selling um, appliances, and they already come, or the manufacturer already has a serial number. So we just want to get a barcode scanner and just scan those in real quick. So we can use the manufacturer's serial number so we don't need to create them. You could do it that way. You can automatically create a customer equipment card. Remember, as we discussed, SAP has a built-in service and repair module down here. So again, if we're dealing with warranties, and we can actually create customer equipment cards for warranties and service calls and so on. And again, the same how you want to release it is set up in the general settings. That's under the administration, system initialization, and under general settings on the inventory tab, we have it here. At that point, <laughs> since we have it set up that way, we would go to our items, and we would determine which items are set for um, serials or batches. You can see this one here. Again, if we look into the general tab, you can see that this server point item is managed by serial numbers, and it's on every transaction. You can also, even though we do that every transaction, you can set this for release only. Again, this might be an item that the manufacturer actually has serial numbers already on it, so you would just want to set it on release only or it's an, and other items that you have to create the serial numbers because they don't come serialized, but you want to track them. 
you can do it that way. And again, you can see that here. If I look at an item that's not set up, like this item here, again, it's just the default is none. I can also do the same for batches. So if we call up our batch number, and we have it here. Again, difference being is batch is a group of items. So if I go to the batch transactions, you can see here I'm dealing with groups or lots. So you can see the quantity left over. Again, our example we received, we highlight this one. You can see we brought 20 in. All 20 items were on the same batch number, and we sold five. As opposed to serial number, which is a unique one-to-one -one relationship, So if we go here to the serial number report, you can see the ins and outs are always going to be, again, you don't even see the quantity here because it's always a one-to-one -one relationship. There's no reason to input the quantity. So we saw that. And again, we saw how when we do our goods received, goods PO, they actually get updated. So once again, this concludes our webinar today on SAP Business One Serial and Batch Transactions. This webinar is being recorded. It will be available on our website. You can visit us at www.mitchellgroup.com to view this plus our other training videos. And we thank you for your time.